Welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home. We are going to dive into this today. I want to welcome everybody. Um, this is this is going to be good today. Um, there's some things on my heart I want to deal with. I want to pick up with some things this new year. Um, I'm very intentional about it. Um, I won't say I've had an awakening or having an awakening, but it's something that's stirring in me. Um, and I want to deal with it tonight. So I want to go ahead and I want you to go ahead and grab your coffee, get your stuff straight. I want you to go ahead, settle down, listen, take notes. I think it's going to be good. I believe that the spirit of God is going to speak to you tonight. Um, I'm believing that he will, that he'll reveal things to you. And I want you to posture and position yourself to receive. Um, I'm going to deal with um, the area of purpose, the purpose driven life, the purpose driven life. Um, and there's some statements I want to make to really sow into your hearts and uh, to help you tonight. And so I believe this is going to be good. I believe I know it's going to be good. Um, so go ahead and share this on your social media platforms. I want you to uh, text people. If anybody that you know that's ever struggled with what God has called them to do with just answering some questions to gain clarity, go ahead and get ready tonight. Get ready tonight. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you for this. Uh, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven. Uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force, none of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords and think to my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach it reverently. Um, and Father, we thank you that the anointing that removes every burden and destroys every yoke manifests. I pray every ear is anointed to hear, every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you. We thank you for it. We do cover the gifts of the spirit as needed to be in operation and demonstration. We thank you for the spirit of wisdom. I ask that that wisdom rest upon me to articulate and to speak to the people uh, that are listening under the sound of my voice whether it be presently or in the future, as they hear this message again over and over, let it resonate in them. Let it answer questions within their hearts. I pray that things be settled with your people, that they have clear direction and distinction and know, Lord, what is it that you want them to do and what is it that you are designed to reveal through them and in them. And so we just thank you for it. I come against every disruptive force that would try to distract people from learning tonight. Thank you for things being settled. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. Well, I want to start off with a statement that I, you know, I've heard in times past. I remember, uh, and I don't know who I first heard it from, but the statement goes like that it, it's to the two most important dates in the person's life is the day that they were born and the day they discovered why the day that they were born and the day that they discovered why, um, many people have struggled with purpose. Many people are struggling with God. What did you, what do you want me to do? What is it that you created me to, you know, created me to do or created me to be? And a lot of times as I, you know, I, I hear these things and that's one of the major things that I hear from people and people may struggle with that. And then there may be people uh, where, where purpose is concerned, relationships are concerned, things of that nature. And a lot of times everything can fit around your purpose and we don't realize it. And as I was sitting um, uh, today or yesterday, maybe I don't know when it was, but just all of a sudden this thought just came to me and it kind of just hit me in a way that, um, and I knew, and I feel like it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me about something and trying to get something across to me. I want to make sure that y'all hear this, that I said uh, yesterday, I was just, I think it was yesterday, that it was a statement that I was just sitting at my desk and that the Holy Spirit, I believe, gave to me or the thought that, that came up in me was this. A lot of times people try to fit their decisions or they make, 
they try to fit their purpose around their decisions or their desires to do something versus making their decisions and choices around the purpose that I have for them. And so a lot of times people can get out of place because they're trying to make, it's like you're trying to make God fit what you want to do versus lining yourself up to fit where he wants you to be and what he wants you to do. My pastor used to make this statement. It was like, and I got what he was saying. He was like, you don't choose a job, your, your church based off of the job that you get. You choose your job based off of the church God calls you to. If God called you to a specific area and location, then you need to find a job that's in that area and location. If God called you to do something at a, at a specific place, now he may call you to do a specific thing, and that specific thing can be done in multiple places. But if you know he's called you to an area, he's called you and given you an assignment, then your choices need to begin to line up with the assignment that he gave you. Because this is going to help somebody with maybe some choices you need to make. And, and but this thing was like, it was just in me. It was stirring in me. And so the, the thing is, this will help you in your, and I have my notes, but, you know, we, we have notes and stuff organized. But some of this stuff I'm just going to spill out of my spirit a little bit. It's just going to kind of come out of me. So if it seems like it's a little over the place, that that's fine because you're going to get what I believe you need to get out of this. And so the, the heartbeat of it is, okay, Mike, I want you, because I'm going to take you through a journey, through an inward thing that was happening with me. But I believe it's, it's, this can work with anybody that's listening right now. So then the journey is, okay, God, I know you've called me to do something. And sometimes, and I'm going to talk to you about discovering that purpose and things that you can begin to do. But one of the things I want to first settle is, okay, why is this so important? How can I find this? What is it that I'm supposed to do so I can now start making certain choices and decisions? Because just like the guy in Matthew 25, where the servants, the five, two, and the one talent, that the master gave them their talents, but then left them, but was expecting them to do something with the talents that he gave them before he left. But he did not give them many instruction, any instructions that the scripture is saying, nothing in particular. But now... He goes away, comes back, and now expects something from them. He, he expects a return on his investment, but he gave it to them according to their ability. And why do I go over this so much? Because I need us to begin to see that there's a responsibility that we have. And then, too, watch this. Sometimes the answer that you're praying about is already in you, and I want to help you discover that. I want to help you to discover that sometimes it's not as much God answering your prayer for guidance as you making a decision to obey what you already know to do. See, this ties into what he spoke to us as this being a year of transformation and a year of change or a year of manifesting the sons of God. Because what I'm feeling is there is a great push to manifest his purpose, his will in the earth like never before. And I feel as though sometimes is when time begins to wind down, things begin to amplify and speed up because it's almost like the earth is having birth pains. There are things where all creation is waiting for this manifestation of the sons of God and to say, okay, you've been called with purpose. And so I need the real you to begin to come forth. I don't need you to be an imitation of anybody else. I need the authentic you to come out with all of your gifts, talents, and abilities. But I begin to think about this scripture that God will give us the desires of our heart. And so one way I would look at that scripture is he would give us the things that we want to do or want to have. But the uh, another way of looking at it is, and another way of viewing it is, he will give us the desires, the things that he wants us to begin to do so that it, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it can be an indication of purpose as to where he wants to move us into because he still will have you to do something that there will be a level of desire that goes with it. Now the other side of it is, what if God starts showing you something that you don't want to do? 
and he starts revealing to you what his purpose is for you and some of the struggle that you're going through is you aligning your will to what it is. It's almost like wearing down your will to finally submit to the thing that I've told you to do because I told you that in the path for your life is the good life. And so sometimes the struggle life, the bad life will begin to frustrate you to start seeking out what it is you're supposed to do because you're not fulfilling purpose. And when you don't fulfill purpose, you get frustrated. And the people around you, watch this, will look at you as being toxic to their lives because now you are frustrated really with you. It has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with what's stirring on the inside of you. And they're trying to figure out what's wrong with you. And so now the, the problem is you're not fitting in certain places and circles because you don't belong there. And God is saying, I need you to begin to spring forth. And the thing that you even looked at yourself as being quirky about, or it was just your way of doing it, or why are you like this? Why are you wired like this? There are certain things you just wired a certain way. That's an indication of what you've been called to now do. The thing that irritates you the most may be a problem you've been called to solve. And so instead of trying to push somebody else to solve the problem, God says, why don't you step up to the plate and be the problem solver here? Because people will pay you to solve problems. People will begin to reward you and seek you out if you can solve their problem. So if you are a problem solver and this is the area that irritates you the most, maybe watch this. And if you find the people who have the problem you've been called to solve, you will find your niche. You will find people who celebrate you and don't tolerate you. See, sometimes maybe you trying to serve your gift to people who don't need it. It may not be a thing that they don't want. They don't like you. It's just a thing. They don't need what you keep trying to offer. Man, this this is something. Oh, man, this this is this is going to be something because and then you get frustrated when people don't like what you're serving. And so if they don't like what you're serving, don't worry about that. Just find the people who do like what you're serving. Everybody won't like my voice. Everybody won't receive my voice. And I'm going to have to be cool with that. Because, see, even myself growing up, I was the type of person that kind of wanted to be cool with everybody. I wanted to kind of be liked by everybody. I was cool with this person and cool with that person. But some of it was it was one of two things. And then I had to learn, and my, as my pastor was doing a series on addiction, appro approval addiction, I began to see some of that stuff was just approval addiction that I just wanted to be liked. So I would now, whether it was dumbed down who I really was or hide parts of me that now I felt as though if I showed you this part of me, you wouldn't accept me in your circles. So I might have been too serious for this one, but now because I love to laugh and love to have fun, now I can't even be myself because this group that I'm admiring, y'all so stiff. And the funny thing is all y'all may want exactly what I have. You just waiting for me to be me so that you can be free to be you. You may be the deliverer for the people that God is calling you to. If you will stand up and be who you are, it will give people permission to be who they are man this man this is good and so this is the stuff that god is stirring up in me and it's like okay and i and i told i was talking to a gentleman the other week and i said i learned a lesson i said I, this was some years ago i was looking at an interview by ll cool j and i remember him saying something and that thing just stuck with me when he said it he says, I refuse to die with all of the gifts, with any gift that's in me left undone or unrevealed. And so it was like, you know what, doggone it, that's right. If I like to draw and I like to write just because other preachers don't draw and other preachers don't do this. Why, wait a minute. Why I just got, why can't I be both and why do I have to choose either or good? Listen, God is ambidextrous. He can use both hands. He has many facets and many sides to him. This, this is one of the reasons I believe the angels cry. Holy, holy, holy. Cause every time they go around the throne, they see another aspect of the father that they didn't see the first time. And so God is so inexhaustible 
inexhaustible and his word is so inexhaustible. God says, I want you to stretch out. I want you to begin to do those things and maybe the multiplicity of what it, I've of who I created you to be may be the very thing that's going to feed you. And I believe it. I believe it's going to be the very thing that feeds you. In other words, your many gifts will be your many streams. And it's time for you to begin to go ahead and settle it down. I'm going to start doing what's in my heart to do. I think it was in 1 Samuel that it was spoken. I don't know if it's the Samuel to the king. Oh, man, I just can't remember off the top of my head. But the statement was like this. Do all that's in your heart to do and we'll be with thee. So whatever it is that you call to do, just go for it. If you dream it, try it. It's almost like, man, just go for it. I don't care how silly the idea seems. Listen, if it don't work out, it just don't work out. But the scripture tells us this, and this is the scripture that came to me, and I keep thinking about was in Colossians 3, 23. Whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you set out to do, do it heartily, but watch this, as unto the Lord. Because some people have struggled with God. I don't, know, I don't know where I fit. I don't know what I can do. Find a vision. We got a vision. We got a mission that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to manifest the love of God through act of goodness and kindness. That's outreach. So if you have a, a heart for outreach, we got a place for you so that you can manifest your heart to serve the community. Oh man, we need to do community outreach. We need to do it. So why don't you spearhead it? No, I don't want the responsibility. See, that's part of the problem. You keep ducking what you've been called because what if God wants you to head it up to bring something out of you that never was brought out of you before? Let's see, okay. No, I got to speak this, uh, and I believe now under the unction of the Holy Ghost. And see, sometimes, and, oh, man, sometimes, you know, no, I got to speak this. I got I to speak it, but I want to speak it in a way that it doesn't come across a certain way because I still want to challenge you and charge you and provoke you to think. I want to provoke you to step out of your comfort zone. And see, don't let other people stop you from doing what God telling you to do. Just because they've been hurt, they're going to try to stop you from serving. And so that now, you, watch this, not realizing it's hindering your growth and development. And God is saying, you got to judge those things and say, wait a minute. Are you going to obey man or are you going to obey God? Okay, you better hear me. Listen, what, listen. Okay, okay. I don't know if y'all ready for this. Y'all y'all better be ready for it because it got to come. Because it has to happen for you to be agitated. Listen, who was it? Lot's wife. When she was talking about she still wanted to, to go back to where God was telling him to come out of. And so her lingering look over the place God told them to leave all of a sudden caused her to be turned into a pillar of salt. And so sometimes what can happen is we'll listen. Abraham and Sarah. God told Abraham what the promise was. He already knew. Okay, I'm going to give you a child. I'm going to give you seed. His wife is like, how is this going to be? I'm barren. So now go ahead and sleep with the maid, sleep with the servant. And all of a sudden now he go ahead and do it. And now there's a child born Ishmael that was not supposed to have been born, but God still honored the maid servant with his grace and his mercy. But then Isaac still had to come on the scene because that was the promised child. And sometimes we'll listen to people closest to us and get us out of the will of God. And you know what God told you to do. And God is saying, you will have to make a decision. I ain't telling you to divorce nobody. I ain't telling you to leave them, but you're going to have to have some intent. Well, not intense, but you're going to have to have some come to Jesus talks and some communication to say, this is what's in me to do. And so now I got to do this thing because this is the Lord calling me to do this. What is he calling you? Because watch this. If I know my purpose, this even comes to relationships. I know who I need to connect with and who I don't need to connect with. 
And because if I'm the type of person that wanted to connect with everybody, I'm going to have to start being cool with if I'm trying to connect with everybody, but this group over here don't fit my purpose, I won't fit in. And so I'm trying to force relationships that won't work. And God said, your relationships over here, but it's not the people I want to connect with. But God says, what I have for you is over here and you're going to flourish in this garden instead of you trying to go to that playground. I want you over here because this way you're going to flourish because they're going to receive your voice over here. Over there, they're going to look at you as like they, how they look Jesus, a prophet without honor in his own country. And so if they don't view you right, they won't receive you right. But the ones who receive, who view you right, will receive you right. And now you can flourish in your gift and you'll be happy. They'll be happy because you're supplying the need and because the grace on you is not for you, it's for the people that you serve. The anointing within is for strength, but the anointing upon is for service. And so you might be frustrated and worn out because now you're giving all your energy to a place you not called to be. Okay. This is what happens on jobs. There are, there's going to be many people who are going to migrate out of jobs that they were never designed to be in. Okay. I got to speak this. This is why I don't care if it's through retirement, leaving the job, doing whatever, but God will give you wisdom to make the choice. He'll give you wisdom as to how to do it. The first time, maybe you didn't do it right, but God says, I'm going to show you how to do this thing. I'm going to show you how to structure yourself. And our job as a ministry is to provide, is to help provide the atmosphere, the platform, even the resources and the, and the, the culture for you, for it to be conducive to grow you up. It's like you're planted in a garden. And if we treat this thing like a garden, and if we treat the ground well, because we want to make sure that this is good soil, we want to make sure this is good ground for people to connect and begin to grow. If you are a tree planted by the rivers of living water, if the living water is flowing out of this place and you connected to this place, you ought to feed off of the life of God that flows out of here. Man, I feel something here. Lord Jesus, I feel something here. Who glory to God. And he's like, Mike, you're going to have to come and speak because you can't be their buddy or their friend. You got to be their man of God. You got to be that voice that speaks life unto them. And if something is dead that need to be stirred up, you speak to that unborn seed that's on the inside of them. This is your year. Glory to God. Who glory to God. Boy, I feel something on me now. Lord Jesus. I, man, this thing. Lord Jesus, it's time to grow. It's time to grow. It's time to grow. It's time to move in this thing. Whatever it is, what is your heart's desire? I was completely going away from some of these notes. What is your heart's desire? I want you to go to, 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 to Ephesians 6 and 6. Let's go to Ephesians 6 and 6. Now, this is, I think it's the Amplified version. Um, I want you to read this real quick. And it reads like this. Well, in verse five, it starts with servants or slaves, be obedient to those who are your physical masters, having respect for them and eager concern um, and eager concern to please them in singleness of motive with all your heart as service to Christ himself. Verse six, not in the way of our service as if they were watching you only to please men, but as servants or slaves of Christ doing the will of God heartily and with your whole soul. In other words, whatever you begin to do for God, give it everything that you have. Giving it everything you have can look certain ways or different ways, maybe for different people, depending on your situation. Because now I want you to begin to hear this right. You got to hear this right. Because sometimes I may not have the time or go through every little detailed explanation of how you do this. And I want, I want to make sure that you hear this right. 
So I want to go ahead. It can be examples of, okay, I can't always be at a particular place physically, but I can service something from afar. I can do what I can do and give it everything I have and do it with excellence because maybe even physically I'm not there. So I can't be at a place and I'm not physically there. So at least I can do something over the phone, over the internet. I can serve. I can pray. Listen, there is no distance in the spirit. I can do something and do it to support so I know I'm supporting the kingdom of God, the, the universal church, while I also serve the local body that I'm connected with. And so this gives me an opportunity where purpose is concerned because the first purpose, the first assignment was to go into all the earth and preach the gospel. When, when he says, when Jesus says to go, and I want to go back, I want to read it because this is, our first assignment. This is the first assignment. Well, I ain't called to be no preacher. Everybody call a preach to some degree, to some degree. Now you may not be called to be a pastor or a ministry gift teacher or whatever, but you've been called to, let me say it another way to share the gospel. See, you can receive it better if I just say it different because preach just means to proclaim. So if you just share your testimony, we're going we're gonna to hit this. We're going to hit this. Now, Matthew, was it 28, 18? Uh, and the disciples, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to start at verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Amen. I know he's telling this to the apostles at this time or the disciples who became apostles. And so, but watch this. He's given that to the church to be even ministers of reconciliation, reconciling the world back to God. But as I was sitting thinking about this, all of a sudden, now this is how you can manifest. You need to understand how to manifest purpose. How can I now, watch this, how can I teach people with the gift that I have? How can I manifest this call with the thing? Watch this, you may not be the best orator, but you're a person who's great at media and sound and technology, and your job may be able to create the app or create the system or the service that promotes the gospel. So you're using your gift to reach everybody worldwide. Whatever it is, you may be that person who serves well. You may be that person who feeds the people who go out to do the missions work. You may feed, listen, you may be a great baker. Watch this, which not only will cause you to feed people, but also will generate income for you to function as a king, which now brings and funnels the finances into the vision so that God's word can get out across this planet. Whatever it is that you do, do it as unto the Lord. Uh -uh. God has said, this is it. You can run, but you can't hide. He says, I'm coming for you. The spirit of God is coming for people and pulling you out into. I was talking to my wife about that the other day. I was like, some, sometimes when you just, as a leader of people, I've learned different people. When you study strategies and you sort of study leadership and even just talking to people, I studied people. I always loved to study sociology, psychology, even when I was in college, stuff like that. Just how people function and how people think and how they how they work. Some people are motivated by a word. Some people are motivated by an invitation. I can put out, we can put out something and say, hey, who's willing to serve? But if I, they won't answer the call. But if I come up to you personally, all of a sudden now that motivates you to serve. But okay, you still need to serve though. God is saying everybody, everybody that's connected here ought to be serving in some capacity. There should never be a person who connects to a ministry, a church that does not serve. Something is wrong there. Now, how you serve is the question now. How can I serve? What can I do? Well, I'm in and out of town. I'm traveling so much. But what can you do? Can you promote 
You're on your phone anyway. Can you send out a message? I don't care. Something. Find some way I can connect. I can sow and I can support through my giving. Well, glory to God. That may be your motivational gift is giving. And so you great at making money. But don't you know you can begin to teach others how to make money? Did you ever even think of, but I don't want to go through all of that. See, you never want to be inconvenienced. When you serve in God, there will be inconvenience. He'll tell you to do stuff, get up and go, and your body may say sit down, but your spirit said get your tail up, rise up, and go do what the master has told you to do. It's time out for this stuff. See, for me, now let me, let me chill. Some things I understand and some things I don't understand. Some things when it's in your heart, this is why I tell people, find your passion. At least discover your passion. What are you passionate about? Because what you're passionate about, I don't have to push you in. Because you already are passionate about it. Find that thing. Discover, well, Pastor, I'm not passionate about anything. Yes, you are. You just need to identify it and say, oh, I never thought that was considered passion. An intense desire about something, something that you love to do, something that you're good at. Some of you are excellent communicators. Some of you can mimic voices and are great, what do you call it, impersonalizationalists. Where you can now imitate voices, and don't you know you can do voiceover work? Don't you know you can be the person that does the announcement sharing things? Don't you know you can connect with the media and do voiceovers to make sounds for things? And all of a sudden now it creates a sound of voice, something that resonates when people hear the finished product and it goes worldwide and it goes viral. That's your voice that's hitting their spirit and causing a response. And all of a sudden you just preached to the world and didn't even realize it. God is saying this time, some of you are creative writers but you stuck in a cubicle and God said, I'm calling that creative ability to come out because I know the cubicle brings safety. And for you, it brought a level of stability, but God is beginning to say, I'm going to show you what you can do with what you got and how it can take care of you. Oh Lord. Whew. Second Peter one and 10. I'm getting ready. I'm getting wrapped this up in a minute. I'm just feeling this thing is like, and this ain't just for us. This for the church worldwide. See this, let me, let me give you an example. I got to be transparent and honest because you got to understand even where I'm coming from, that I'm not just preaching this to you. This is something internally going on in me that God is talk is telling me things like, I want you to begin to preach, not like you just preaching the spirit of fire. You need to begin to preach and teach like other ears are listening to you. I'm calling you. I told you to go and teach my people who they are. And my people are not just in Richmond, Virginia at a location. My people are everywhere. So your voice needs to be heard. See, 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 this is, he didn't say this. I start thinking like this, Matthew 25, because I want to be a five talent man. I want to maximize my talents. I don't want to hide my talent like the one talent guy did out of fear. No more fear. And so fear got to go. Or even if fear is present, you got to do it anyway. Uh, Moses said, I got a st st stuttering problem. How can I be a deliverer of millions? My hand going to come on you, boy. See, what you're going to do, watch this, it's not you. He says, I just need you to be yielded to me, and I'm going to help you with this thing. The Holy Ghost going to overshadow you. Because when you walk in purpose, the anointing, you wear it like a coat. It'll come on you and begin to manifest. Why? Because that's your purpose. Listen, if you're working on computers, the anointing will come on you while you're working on computers. That's what you call to do. 
If you call to clean a building and have a janitorial service, man, he'll call you how to clean buildings. Watch this. See, y'all y'all got to receive when the anointing is flowing to, to catch stuff. You got to catch some things in the spirit. You got to catch an idea and get pregnant with it. See, he can call you to clean a building. You can clean floors and toilets like nobody's business. But then he begins to teach you how to do business and how to scale your business and how to begin to hire people instead of complaining about problems. You are now an answer to a problem. And so now God will cause you to open up a business that can help employ people who come out the prison systems, who come out of different areas. And you can help recidivism and say, now I'll hire you, but also train you how to be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, and now manage systems, train people. And now God will give you an idea to produce a product that can be a cleaning solution. And not only watch this, do you have the business, but now all of a sudden now you have a patent on something that not only will help you, that'll help the world. Y'all better hear me. You better hear what I'm telling you. These are things that are beginning to manifest because people are open to entrepreneurship like never. Oh Lord. Mm. It's like the children of Israel. What's happening there is almost like a direct reflection. Many people, they came out of Egypt, but Egypt didn't come out of them. And because they still had an Egypt mentality of scarcity, but watch this, also of dependency. They were depending on their oppressors to feed them and take care of them. And they would say stuff like, it was better for us if we would have stayed in slavery. And they died and their children, everybody at that time, 20 and under, went into the promised land. Man. Don't be left out of what's taking place. I'm telling you, y'all better hear me. I'm telling you. <laughs> what does that mean? That means a mentality has to be formed. You have to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Don't be afraid of technology so that you don't want to learn. I don't want to learn it. Why? Why? Because there's a fear there that you really don't understand it. It's okay. Find somebody that'll be patient with you and help you work through it. Don't just, don't just cancel out. I'm not even going to try because you might miss out on something. Your mind is sharp. When Moses died, he said, watch this. His eyes were not dim, neither his spiritual forces abated. I like to make confessions like, blessed are my eyes for they see and my ears for they hear. No, I'm not going to be old, walk old, act old. Uh-uh. Even if I felt like walking a certain way, uh-uh, body, move well. Oh, man. Y'all get, get anything out of this? I know I can't see nobody. I, I just go back sometimes what I'm sensing. Oh, I feel a flow. If I feel a flow, then I keep going. If I feel apprehension, then I just, I'll stop. Because you got you to gotta get ready for this. This is, this is the purpose-driven life. What is my purpose? What do I want to do? Okay, I want to travel. I want to see the world. You can still do that and fulfill purpose. Just schedule it. <laughs> it's simple. For some, it just has to be scheduling. Some of you, if you start walking in purpose, it may just open up the door to the things you always been wanting to do. Purpose will open you up to stuff like that. Purpose will open you up to favor. You've been wanting to go to a game at your favorite team for years, but once you walked in purpose, you came across somebody that may have blessed you with the tickets to go there and paid all expenses to go there. I remember my wife and I, we had a couple, um, one of our first, Couples that joined, well, they weren't a couple at that time. They, were, they weren't married at the time. The first uh, praise leader and the first man that joined the church. They actually invited my wife and I out to where they were living when they got married and just had a ball. We had a ball. Just went out there, went to a game. I'd never gone out there or traveled to that particular city at that time. And we just had fun, enjoyed it. Awesome couple. Love them to life. And, and to see even what God is doing with them now. And seeing how he's using their life and ministry to just change the world. God wants us to do great things. But watch this. It was tied to the fact that we were their pastors. And they loved us. And they just wanted to be a blessing to us. 
And watch this. I may not have ever gone out there on my own had not they just invited us to come out. I don't know. But watch this. You, I'm going to say it how I believe it. I believe desires being fulfilled and met will even be tied to you walking out in your purpose, period. There will be gifts that God will drop just because he knows you like it. I'm going to start dealing with just the, the, the prosperity factor, the, the abundance principle. That God wants you to live this life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Jesus said that in John 10 and 10 in the Amplified Version. The thief comes but for the steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you may have life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. He wants you to live the overflow abundant life. And so you, watch this, purpose, I believe, is connected to that abundant life. What is it that God is telling you to do? Do it heartily as unto the Lord. Give it everything you got. And that means sacrifice at times. That means recalibrating. And we're going to be extremely intentional about strategic teaching, preaching. This is another thing that popped in. It's almost like you, it, can, it can be being led by the Spirit. The, the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. But even from a, 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 a steward mindset, when I know purpose, I can plan accordingly. And I can intentionally develop myself to fulfill my purpose because if I know I'm called to do a thing, what are the prerequisites for that thing? So if I'm called to preach, I need to learn, I need to study the word. But then I need to learn how to study. And so if I don't know the information, I have to put myself in environments that will help me grow in my preaching, in my studying, in my disseminating that information, and in me sharing it, and me knowing that some of the responsibilities for the office I'm walking in may mean I need to counsel people and learning counseling tips and things of how to deal with people, how to say things a certain way. The scripture says, speak the truth in love, so I need to learn what love is so I'll know how to speak it to you in a way that you can receive it because sometimes I may need to say it strong to this person and I need to soften my heart and say it this way to this person because this person will receive it better because if I came strong it will crush them but if I came tender they'd receive it but this person that's the knucklehead they need to hear it hard and they tell you I want to hear it hard I, you got to get in me okay I'm gonna get in you and tell you you wrong you're lazy now get up and do it but However, watch this. The point I'm making is whatever you do, do it heartily. But what does heartily mean? Give it everything you got. You cannot be lazy and fulfill purpose the way God wants us to do it. So if watch this. So if you have experienced a level of laziness and being lethargic or now the energy, Jesus said, my meat, my energy, my supply, my sustenance comes from the will of the father. So when I get into the will of the father, it brings a drive. It brings an energy. It brings an excitement. And then watch this. People who are excited will ignite other people to get excited. This is why, too, crowds will begin and draw a different energy and excitement when you come into a place with purpose, when we begin to come back together in person. And now one Sunday turns into two Sundays in a row and now three Sundays in a row and now four Sundays in a row. And now all of a sudden, because you got used to just getting out the bed and flipping on your computer and listening to the words, you got to get up out the bed, get dressed and go now and say, I got to readjust my Myself, but the readjustment will bring a different energy and watch this a reconditioning. That's the word. God says, I'm going to recondition many people this year. That's what the transformation is about to condition you to where I'm taking you. 
because you can't function the way you're functioning and receive what it is I have for you at this level. For you to walk at another level, you got to prepare for it and you got to eat at it. And when you start eating at another level, it gives you an appetite for that level. And when you have an appetite for that level or a desire, and then you see the price tag associated with it, that means you may have to now extend your days sometimes. It may mean you got to read something that you don't like reading, but you got to get the information in you one way or another, whether it's through a book, whether it's through a video, whether it's you taking a course or a class, whether whatever it is, I got to get this in me, even if it's uncomfortable, because watch this change for many people people is uncomfortable and you got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and say, I got to come out of this. If the church provides a class if finances, I need to show up. Or if you don't get it from the church, get it from somewhere. Cause see then what I, my desire is and what I've already started to, doing is start building what I like to call my apostolic team. In other words, why do I call it that? I had a preacher ask me one time, what do you mean by apostolic team? developing a team that will assist me in fulfilling the vision that God told me in going. And when he says, go teach my people who they are, it's not only teaching them their identity, but also teaching them their authority. And with teaching them their identity and their authority is also now within even the vision statement, pursuing their purpose and igniting a passion and fire. So pursuing your purpose means development in your purpose. It's all inclusive. If y'all don't know by now, this is a powerful vision that God has given us. And watch this. Fear will no longer hinder the purpose. He says, I've told you the systems, the strategies, and the structure need to be in place. And you have to obey everything I'm telling you to do. Because what I'm doing, I'm setting you up for the outpouring. As long as the vessels were there, the man of God told the woman of God, told her, go borrow some vessels and borrow not a few. Because he knew God about to show up here. And the oil kept flowing as long as she had vessels. The only reason the oil stopped flowing is because her vessels, she didn't have any vessels to contain the oil. In other words, her capacity was stopped. It was capped by the ability to receive the oil. When God pours oil on you, his anointing and his power, do you have the capacity to maintain it and sustain it? The anointing on me can, can, can cause messages to flow and can cause great. This is why there are preachers who are in storefronts whose voices will never be heard. And they are anointed. They love God. But they will never make the level of impact that they have desired and God has desired because they didn't have the structure to carry them to where they needed to go. God is saying, I am calling you to come together to get this, pur this purpose out to the people and this vision shall grow. This vision shall manifest and it shall be done now. It's like, you seem passionate about this, but yes, I am. If I ain't passionate about it, who will be? If I'm the leader and I ain't passionate, why will I expect you to be passionate about it? Why should somebody sow into your vision when you don't even sow into it? Man, I'm about to throw something right here now. You hear me? If you ain't excited about it, mm. See, I got to be honest. See, I can be transparent because I'm free. God is doing something. He has done something in me and doing something in me. I love it. I like it. I was telling I was ready to keep going with the prayer fast. I may pick up more with the prayer. And there may be other times where I just say, hey, we calling the fast. Let's do this thing. Because I like the flow that we start hitting. I like the rhythm. It was like, oh, man, I struggle with this thing. And this one but seven days. Normally, we would have done 21 in the past. And I'm like, oh, the conditioning of people. That's why God told me to do it. They got to get their conditioning up. 
for what I'm calling you to do. Listen, you need to be spiritual and you need to be in tune with me and you need to refresh yourself and you need to reset yourself. And all of a sudden now I'm strengthening you for the purpose that I've called you because you can't be spiritually weak. You can't be no spiritual coward and walk in this thing because boldness going to have to come on, man. You, it's going to have to come on you and watch this spiritual sustainability. That means a consistency in your dietary regimen spiritually of feeding your spirit, taking care of your body so that you can be a conduit that I can flow power through. Because if I keep bringing this anointing on you, but you keep going, watch this, you never refill yourself. You'll start living off of empty. And so now what will happen is when you live off of empty and you now walking around like that, you're more susceptible to temptations, tests and trials of the enemy. Me, and this is why some people fall. They may be highly anointed, but have a poor daily regimentation. Your daily regimen will determine your success. And so you speaking and praying in the spirit daily and for significant amounts of time will begin to stir and charge your spirit up. So when you go out into a wicked world, what's on the world won't come on you because you so greasy with the anointing. That is hard to take on what slips off of you. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, boy, I'm preaching. I'm gonna get myself off in the night, dog. I don't care. I love this. The Holy Ghost, he's because he's he's dealing. I'm out of time. Dog it. I'm telling you, y'all better get ready. I ain't playing. We ain't playing with this thing. There's a level of focus. God has been giving us warning signs, hints, instructions, the focus of faithfulness. Remain faithful. So that means if he's given us that, that, that declaration, there's going to be a tendency to get you off of the faithfulness, to get you off of being focused. Can he count on you to show up consistently? Can he, can he count on you to be that person that speaks when he tells you to speak. I remember those times coming up, the level of it. I was looking for people. I was looking for conversations to open up where I could even begin to share the gospel. It was stuff like that. It's like just being ready at a moment's notice. Oh, they want me to pray? Okay, let's pray. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I'll never see a miracle if I don't step out to believe for one. Let's try praying for him. Come on, let's get our faith so stirred up. It's like when you rub your foot on the ground and you start building up the static electricity, when you start confessing daily, I lay hands on the sick and they recover. I lay hands, these signs follow them that believe. I speak with new tongues. I cast out devils. I cast out devils. Watch it. Ooh, I lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. These signs follow them that believe. I believe, I believe. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. I'm hearing stuff on this. I'm hearing about the ability to cast out devils. I'm hearing testimonies. I'm reading it in the scripture. I'm expecting when somebody comes around me sick, let me lay hands on you. Because the word says if I believe and I lay hands on you, all right, you ought to recover. But watch this. I also know the principles of faith too that now I want to get their faith to a place and say, now I'm going to speak life into you. I'm going to preach to you what the word of God says about healing. I'm going to preach to you what the word of God says about deliverance and freedom. I'm going to call you this. I'm going to speak life into you. Now you ready? Come on, let's receive. And watch what begins to happen. Man, 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 my God, my God. Hallelujah. I'm Whew. Jesus. What am I doing? Building on myself on my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, because I just poured out, so I need to build back up. So while I'm going through the day tonight, tomorrow, La Rabba Shekereba Setene, find words, scriptures, find uh, messages that may minister to me, whatever it is, build myself up, build myself up. Why? Because the devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Sometimes at your greatest mountaintops, watch this, will come your greatest valleys and your greatest attacks. 
Don't be arrogant. I don't know why I'm saying this. Somebody may need to hear this. Don't be so arrogant as to think that the enemy can't hit you. Because then you'll become arrogant in position and put yourself in places and positions that your flesh ain't ready to handle. Mm -mm. Follow the word. The word is your instruction. The word brings life. Don't even go by a loose woman's house, the scripture says, because she'll seduce you like a Venus flytrap and try to suck you in. Don't you go by there. If you messed up, you ain't got to beat yourself up and walk in shame and condemnation. Just don't do it. No, I got to set boundaries because I got purpose on my mind. This going to disrupt my purpose. This will disrupt my purpose. If it disrupts my testimony, nobody will hear me because they don't trust me no more. So now that disrupts the effectiveness of my ministry. Protect yourself at all costs. Protect. Well, I said, if I need to travel somewhere, uh -uh, I ain't going by myself. Somebody need to travel with me. I've been there where I preach and ladies will come up and begin to talk after the service. But watch this. Now, they didn't necessarily flirt. But I began to realize that the anointing is attractive. It is designed to draw. And so a man or a woman who has lack of character will use that attraction to their advantage and take advantage. Mm. And this is what we're hearing now. That there are preachers who are being exposed in certain places, some that are dead and gone. And now the exposing of this. And sometimes what happens, don't, don't get caught up in the flash. This is why I had to learn. Oh, okay. I, I, I'll deal with that later. I don't get caught up in the, the anointing the way I used to. I'm not super impressed by the anointing because that's God given. We got to be more impressed about the fruit of the spirit, which is man developed. He helps us. He's deposited the fruit in us, but we got to develop it. We got to develop it. But now he gives us the Holy Spirit to help us. Because it's the fruit of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, which now is deposited in our born again human spirit. But watch this. Okay, thank you, Lord. That's right. Correct me on that one. Even the love of God has been deposited in us. But watch this. The Bible says, yeah, by the Holy Ghost when we got born again. That love, uh, Romans 5 and 5, that that love was deposited in us, but now we got to grow in it. And we got to talk right. So it's time to check yourself. Yeah, we got to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. I know that's just a, this is a play on it. But this this is a call. That's been there's a okay. It's a time is up. Time is up. All I say is there's been a call to holiness that I'm hearing like never before. It's like, all right, if you get off a little bit, come back, come back. The Holy Spirit will be there. He says, I'm going to write my laws. I'm going to put my spirit in you and write my laws in your heart. And I'm going to put my spirit in you and cause you to be able to walk in my commandments. He's going to help us to walk this thing out. And that's where purpose is concerned as well. Because your promotion is also tied to your character. And sometimes God won't open the door until he knows he can trust you in that door, through that door. Because he's protecting you and protecting the people he's going to bring you in contact with. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you. I just got to shut it down. We got to, we bless you. We thank you. Hallelujah. That's a teaching moment in that. I, I, I got to just. Because <laughs> I'm a steward of this. I'm a steward of the mysteries of God. When the anointing is activated in operation, things begin to flow. But I still, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So I still have the authority and the right to shut it down. Don't quench the spirit. No, I have the right to govern and watch because I have to guard my spirit and my heart 
not to allow, just like sometimes with Jesus, the greed of the people. Now, I'm not saying y'all greedy. I'm not saying y'all greedy. I'm not saying it from that standpoint. But as a minister, you do have to protect yourself at times to say, okay, I poured what I needed to pour. I feel like I fulfilled my assignment. But just because of the hunger of the people, things can continue to flow. Now, in another setting, I may continue longer. But now just making sure I'm guarding myself properly to say, okay, we can come back. We got some time to come back and deal with this. See, that's part of governing where purpose is concerned, governing and managing and stewarding the anointing. Ooh, y'all, y'all, man, y'all getting some stuff tonight. Y'all, man, y'all go back. I'm dropping some nuggets. Y'all got to pick the, y'all please pick this stuff up. Pick these nuggets up. I'm, I'm helping you. Because this will help you not walk in empty. That's why, too, sometimes, yes, you have to say no. So even as you're serving, yes, there are times you have to say no so that you're not drained or taken advantage of or abused. And I get that. But don't use past abuses to now scar you and scare you from being now fruitful and faithful now. That was, man, shoot. Doggone it. That was good right there. <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Oh, that was good, because that's how the enemy will do. Remember, remember how they used to treat you. You don't want that to happen again. Okay. Just because they didn't know how to steward and manage. Or just because whatever, you just kind of, you got off a little bit. You know how to do it now. But you still got to use it for God's glory. Amen. Praise God. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we walk in deliverance and freedom in this area. Thank you for people who need to understand their purpose, that they will begin to set their hands to work the work that's in front of them, and that you'll open up their eyes and their ears to hear the specific assignments to what you've called for them to do. And so we just bless you and we thank you for it. So I pray for their strength. I pray for their wisdom. I pray for doors being open and no man can shut. I pray that you even send laborers ac across their path to assist and to help and to even further explain, to articulate and to help keep accountable what's been heard and what's been received. So we just bless you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Whew. Yeah, that's why I needed to stop. I felt that thing flowing. Y'all was receiving tonight. I appreciate that. Don't you know the liberty and the freedom for a preacher, for a teacher of the word to begin to share and know that what's being said is being received? It causes more to flow. And so I just want to help you. I want to help you, but in helping you, I'm fulfilling my purpose. So I'm walking in this and I'm doing what he's telling me to do. So me walking in my purpose is helping you walk in yours. Praise God. All right. At this time, we're going to sow and honor God in our giving. Oh, man, I left my, oh. Information is coming up on your screen as to how you can sow and give. Let's go ahead and make this a year of great generosity, great giving. We have a lot to get done and accomplish. We have missions work to do, local and global. We have a building to possess to get this job, to get this gospel out. We have new equipment that we need to acquire and, and, and for the purpose of presenting the gospel in such a way that it can be received and be demonstrated and revealed with excellence. And so your giving makes a difference. As you give, I'm in agreement. We're in agreement. Rock and I are in agreement with you. Pastor Rock and I are in agreement for you to get everything that God has for you. We're believing for the hundredfold return. Glory to God. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless the work of your hands. May your book sell, your product sell, whatever it is, whatever businesses you're in, whatever your jobs that you're on, 
I declare new contracts. I declare raises. I, whatever is needed, witty inventions, ideas, and concepts, let them come forth now in Jesus' name. May you not lack another day in your life, not even thinking broke, thinking lack, but we only think abundance, God's provision over and above. So even as you sow, do it in faith, expecting to receive. And it's okay to expect to receive harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. As you sow, there are the different opportunities and ways in which you can sow. You can scan the QR code. It'll take you to a secure page where you can sow. You can text. You can send uh, in the mail if you want to. Uh, the address is on the screen. Maybe somebody may be listening to this. You can send. A, you can write out a check. Make it out to SOFF. That's sufficient. You can send it to 13423 Richmond, Virginia, 23225, Spirit of Fire Fellowship, and we will get that. It'll be applied. Listen, to your heavenly account, we're expecting. And every life that's touched by this ministry, you get credit for it. You're a partner with this ministry. You're a partner with this vision. You are helping us get the job done. Amen. Oh, Saturday, I think the woman make an announcement. Uh, we have our helps ministry training. Uh, it'll be at La Prairie Library. I believe it's, what was it from 1 to 4 o'clock, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, this Saturday, La Prairie Library. Information will be texted out. Um, and we're just asking everybody that's desiring to serve. And after this message tonight and those coming forth, I'm just praying. If you know somebody that didn't listen to this, tell them, listen to it tonight. Encourage them to come out um, so that we can all come together. It's, we're going to have a good time for those that can be a part of. Uh, I know some people have already let us know, you know, they aren't able to come in certain places uh, for certain reasons. But um, we want you all to show up so we can just uh, begin to train and develop as to how we serve the people and how we receive the people and minister to people as they're coming in to our in-person services and just for ministry overall as well. All right. Well, guys, uh, I think that's it. We love you. We pray God's best for you. I pray a sweet sleep and a peaceful rest of your lives. Don't worry. Just rest. Relax. Do your due diligence. Do the work you need to do, but rest in him. The Bible says labor to enter into that rest. So mentally learn how to rest, which will help you to physically rest. The enemy can trick you into feeling like you're lazy because you feel like, okay, if I'm laying down or resting or enjoying myself, I'm being idle or unproductive. Don't let them, don't let them lead you into that falsity. That falsehood, you need to rest. You need to enjoy life. Decompress. Just chill. All is well. You'll get the job done. And when we talk about even doing it harder than unto the Lord, some people push so hard. Then they run their bodies down. No, there's balance to everything. Enjoy life. Plan vacation. Schedule fun time. Just go out and enjoy yourself. It's okay. You work hard. I believe work hard, play hard. And then there are times, I know you got a goal and you're saving up your money, for, and that's cool. But have fun, okay? We love you. We appreciate you. want you to have a great night. Love you. See you next time. Peace.